In this video, we're going to be looking at division with polynomials. So here we've got a cubic and we want to divide it by x plus 3. Now the method we're going to use is the method you used when you were back in primary school. Some people call it the bus stop method. Others you will remember it as simply long division. Okay, so let's see how it works. So you'll start off by drawing something like this. And inside it, we're going to put our long polynomial expression. And outside, we put what we are dividing it by, which is the x plus 3. So you should remember this sort of setup from primary school division. So let's have a go. So the answers which go at the top, it all depends on this highlighted x here. So remember, this is one of our focal points, this x here. This is what we use to decide our answers at the top. Okay, so for the first answer which goes at the top, we're going to look at the x cubed. And what you need to do is think of what you need to times this first x by to get to this x cubed. So have a think. What do you have to multiply x to turn it into x cubed? And hopefully you said x squared. And that's the first part of our answer. And it goes at the top. It's x squared. From this point, it's going to get a little bit tricky. So you're going to really need to concentrate. So we need to do something with this first part of our answer, this x squared. This x squared goes back and times is what we're dividing it by, the x plus 3. So we first multiply the x squared to the x, which gives us x cubed. Then we need to multiply that x squared to the 3. And that gives us 3x squared. And we write these at the bottom here in line with the same powers. So cube terms are written in line with the cubes and the square terms are written in line with the squares. Now comes the next step. We need to do a subtraction now. Okay, so x cubed minus x cubed, of course, is nothing. Then we have minus x squared minus a 3x squared. And you should know that's minus 4x squared. Then we have minus 9x subtract nothing, which is minus 9x. And 9 subtract nothing, which is a 9. Now we're going to do it all over again. Now before we continue, if you're doing this for the first time, just rewind and watch it again up to this point. Because next we're going to do the whole thing again. But this time we're going to be turning the x into this minus 4x squared here. Even if you rewinded it and watched it five times, it wouldn't be too many. So go ahead and do it if you need to. Okay, so let's start again. So now we're going to say, how do we turn this x into this minus 4x squared? What do we multiply it by? And hopefully you said minus 4x. And that minus 4x goes at the top as part of the answer. Now, if you remember the next step from here, we use that part of the answer, the minus 4x, and we multiply it back to the x plus 3, like so. So minus 4x times the x gives us minus 4x squared. Then we do the minus 4x times the plus 3, giving us minus 12x. Now, what did we do next after we multiplied it back out? Now, if you did watch it repetitively, like I asked, you'd probably know it right away. We did a subtraction. So let's go ahead and do that now. Of course, minus 4x squared, but subtracting another minus 4x squared is nothing. Then you have minus 9x subtract minus 12x, which turns into minus 9x plus 12x, which is 3x. And of course, we have 9 subtract nothing, which is 9. And guess what we do now? Well, we do it all over again. This time, we're going to be focusing on the 3x. 
how do we turn this x into 3x? And whatever that is goes at the top. So what is it? It's 3. You need to times x by 3 to turn it into 3x. Now, what did we do next? Of course, we multiplied it out. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 3 is 9. And what's the next step? Hopefully, you said subtraction. So clearly, you can see if you subtract these, you get 0, which is excellent. That means it goes in exactly. And our answer is what we have at the top x squared minus 4x plus 3. Brilliant. We've done our first division. Now, like I said, if you're doing this for the first time, please watch this repetitively, maybe three to five times before we carry on. Okay, so remember we just answered this question here. And of course, this was our answer x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now, just something extra, which is good to know, is we can now factorise that expression we divided. And I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so here's the expression. Since we've done the division now, this expression can be written as, well, whatever the answer was, multiplied by x plus 3. Now, that's quite nice, because we've nearly factorised the expression. Now, one of the brackets has got quadratic in it. Now, if you factorise that quadratic further, which you shouldn't have any problems with at this stage, we've managed to factorise the expression into three brackets. So we've got three factors of the expression. OK, so let's do another question. So we're going to set up the division first. So the expression we're dividing goes inside here. Now. The thing you put inside here, the polynomial, is very important if there's a term missing that you still put it inside. For example, we didn't have any x's in the expression we're dividing, so I did put 0x. At the top where we put our answer, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's a term missing. But underneath the bus stop, it's very important that there's no missing terms. So if you haven't got an x term, you still write it down. You write it as 0x. And if you didn't do that, you might have some problems with your division. And of course, the 2x plus 1, which we're dividing by, goes outside. Now we're ready to divide. So I've just pushed it to the top to give us some space. OK. OK, so this 2x is the most important thing. Firstly, we're going to look at this 4x to the power of 4. How do we get from the 2x to 4x to the power of 4? What do you multiply by? And that's going to be the first part of the answer. And hopefully you said 2x cubed. Now, what came next? Well, we multiply this 2x cubed, which we put as part of the answer, to the 2x plus 1. So let's go ahead and multiply it out. So 2x cubed times 2x gives us 4x to the power of 4. And 2x cubed times 1 gives us 2x cubed. And remember these answers when you're multiplying it back out. has to go in line with the correct power. So you can see the x to the power 4 term is directly underneath x to the power 4 term. And the cube is directly underneath the cube term. And next comes the subtraction. Of course, 4x to the power 4 subtracted by 4x to the power 4 is nothing. And 0x cubed subtracted by 2x cubed is simply minus 2x cubed. And the rest all, all stay the same because there's nothing you're subtracting it by. And guess what? We're going to do it again. This time, we're going to focus on this minus 2x cubed. So how do we turn this 2x into minus 2x cubed? And you need to times it by minus x squared. So that's our next part of our answer. Next step, multiply the minus x squared, which we just put as part of our answer, to the 2x plus 1. So that gives us minus 2x cubed. And timesing it to the 1 gives us minus x squared. 
Next step comes the subtraction again. And you shouldn't have any problems doing the subtraction. Of course, the minus 2x cubed subtract minus 2x cubed is nothing. Carry on the subtraction. So now we've done the subtraction. So we'll do the whole algorithm again. This time focusing on the minus 16x squared. How do we get from 2x to minus 16x squared? And it's minus 8x you need to multiply by. So that goes as the next part of our answer. Next step, multiply that part of the answer with the 2x plus 1. So minus 8x times 2x gives us minus 16x squared. And minus 8x times 1 gives us minus 8x. Again comes the subtraction. Just here, be careful of the signs because you've got 0x minus minus 8x. So it becomes 0x plus 8x. And 4, subtract nothing is simply 4. And we go again. This time looking at the 8x. To get from 2x to 8x, of course, you just multiply by 4. Next, we multiply the 4 out to the 2x plus 1. And again, do the subtraction. And we get 0. So it goes in exactly again. Definitely have a rewind and look at that again. Okay, so let's try another one. Pause the video if you want to have a go. Okay, so this is our setup. So let us begin. How do you get from x to 2x cubed? Well, you multiply by 2x squared. So that's the first part of our answer. Next step, multiply it out. So we multiply the 2x squared with the x minus 4. Next is the subtraction. Okay, so we've done our subtraction now. Now we're going to do it again. This time, we're looking at the 3x squared. How do you get from the x to the 3x squared? Well, you times it by 3x. That's the next part of the answer. Again, we subtract it out. The 3x, which we put as a part of our answer, with the x minus 4. Now we've done our multiplying. Next comes the subtraction again. Okay, so now we're going to look at how do you get from the x to this minus 4x. And hopefully you said you multiply by minus 4. Next step, we multiply that minus 4 out with the x minus 4. And finally, we do our subtraction. And we get minus 6. So this time, it didn't go in exactly. We've got a remainder. And the remainder is minus 6. So if you did pause it and try it on your own, and you got minus 6 and were worried, well, well done, you got it right. So this is the division we just did. Now, if you watch the video on the factor theorem, just want to say a couple of things about that. Now, remember when you did the division, it didn't come out as zero, did it, at the end? So it didn't go in exactly. And what that means is x minus four is not a factor. In all the other cases, what we divided by was a factor because it went in exactly. So in this case, it's not a factor. And another thing you can say about this expression, remember, if we're looking at x minus 4 as a factor, if it is a factor, if we put plus 4 into the expression, it should come out as 0. So should this one come out as 0? Remember, it's not a factor, is it? So it won't come out as 0. But something interesting is, it comes out as minus 6. So although it doesn't come out as zero, it does tell you what the remainder would be. It's something good to know. Now, before we finish this video, I did want to show another very quick way of doing a division. It's so quick that you can do it instantly. So make sure you keep it secret. Okay, so this is the expression we're dividing. We're dividing it by x plus three. So what you can do is you can write it like this. This expression can be written as x plus 3 times something, whatever the answer would be if you did the division. Now, if the expression can be written like this, what must be in that empty brackets? It must be a quadratic because you've got a linear and you're multiplying it by something and you're getting a cubic. So if you've got something which is linear, meaning power 1, and you're multiplying it by something and you're getting cubic, that something must be a quadratic. So in that empty brackets is definitely a quadratic. You've got an x squared term, 
an x term and a number. Now we know what the x squared term is. It's simply x squared. Because that x, if you're good at your expanding brackets, which you should be now, has to multiply out to give x cubed. And it can only do that if there's an x squared here. And the number at the end must be 3. Again, if you're good at expanding, you know it must be 3. Because when you do expand it out, it should give you a 9. And it can only do that if you put a 3 there. So in terms of that answer to the division, we've nearly got it. We've just got one missing bit. And these two parts we did get is pretty much instant. You can look at it and see what they must be. Now the question is, how do we get that x term in the middle of the answer? Well, at the moment, if you did expand it, and you times this 3 to the x squared, you get 3x squared. But what should you get? You should get minus x squared. So we're not quite getting what we need if we did expand it as it was. We're getting 3x squared, and we should be getting minus x squared. So what do we need to balance it off? Well, we need a minus 4x here to make that happen. Reason being is that minus 4x can multiply the x to make minus 4x squared, giving us that minus 4x squared we needed. And guess what? We've done. We've got the answer. This is the answer to the division. Now, how quick was that? We did need that whole long division. And if you get good at it, you can pretty much say the answer like this instantly as you look at it. So it's a nice quick method. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.